Call of Duty Black Ops released in 2010 and is often looked at as a major turning point in the Call of Duty franchise. It's when the story really just took a very narrative driven pathway unlike anything that had released beforehand. And with this game being out for over 10 years now and numerous sequels released, there's still a large group of players who go back to Black Ops after a time and find new ways to continue to play this game. And despite the fact that this game has a ton of required sections, scripted moments, and other things like that, some players have managed to run this game so quickly that they can beat it in under the three hour mark, which is incredibly impressive. Matter of fact, the speedrunner Henry the Hippo or 302 Henry has managed to get the time all the way down to two hours and 38 minutes. So today we wanted to look at how a player like Henry was able to run through a game like Black Ops in such a short amount of time. And honestly, the run is pretty wild. First of all, before we jump into this, make sure you check out Henry's YouTube channel, link in the description down below. You'll see footage from his world record run that we used in this video. Jumping into the first level of the game, the main strategy is just to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Right away, we see Henry run through the doors and do something that we actually have covered before where we covered a Modern Warfare 2 speed run. But essentially, if you do a specific type of maneuver with your mouse and keyboard and you do a strafe jump, and kind of wiggle a little bit, you can start to pick up momentum. So right away in the first level, running past all of the enemies, doing this strategy is a good first example. Then at the car, turn around and blast a few of the enemies that are behind the corner to help allow the NPC teammates to move up as you need them for the next part of the level to start. Jump in the car and end the first section of the level. Going into the next part of the level, there's a lot of waiting around for woods and the crew to zip line or to open a door or to let the enemies pass. Kind of hilarious how many forced sections of waiting there truly are, but when you're finally allowed to push, the main strat here is to use noob tubes to blast the first few enemies, which can save a lot of time, as essentially it allows you to move up faster, and it's something that's incredibly important throughout the rest of the run. At the doorway where you're stuck waiting for woods some more, we actually see Henry jumping up, to see the enemies through the window and kill them before the door even opens. But it does let him move on through even faster, pushing through to kill more enemies. The time when he gets to the big house, just running past everything and just killing certain enemies to force the NPCs to push ahead and progress is kind of the main strat this time. Later in the level, when you get to the first door where you typically breach, by pulling out a noob tube, you can cancel the slowdown sequence and allows you to clear the enemies even quicker. And when you get to the second breach, we see Henry here hip firing two rapid shots to skip the bullet slowdown follow animation which typically plays which shaves even more time and while this next part gets even more crazy running through the building and avoiding enemies and just hoping to the rng gods that you don't die is kind of the main strat that ends up getting used here it's actually a strat that comes up time and time again in black ops 1 and we'll see a little bit more of that when it starts to get even more chaotic as the game progresses in difficulty after pushing outside finding cover over by the back wall where you later will go through is the most effective way. We see Henry pick off selected enemies while waiting for Carlos to eventually show up. This allows players to push through the door right away, killing those enemies that are right on the other side of the door and make a quick run through the cornfield, then jump through the airfield. After pushing through the airplane and Mason jumping out, getting oofed and forgotten, the game then progresses to the next level, Vorkuta. Now, Vorkuta is definitely one of the most popular and iconic levels in Call of Duty history, and essentially essentially for this level to fly through it as fast as possible. The strat here is just to run down the road and just wait for that elevator to finally come up. You gotta be the first one on. It's very important. Also, it was at this time you notice that the PC graphics are running on the lowest setting so that the frame rate can be as high as possible, allowing for the game to be played in the fastest way possible. But watching this run and seeing those graphics on those low settings does make Black Ops appear as a very different experience. In the outside section, those turrets are kind of an instant to kill thing, so you do have to wait with everyone and hide behind the train and slowly push up while taking cover. But after this section, you can run ahead past the enemies and wait by some doors. There's a few stretches where we see Henry just sprinting for his life. 
and running past a lot of enemies in hopes not to die and just taking out the essential ones that get in his way. He keeps running inside and in the section where you typically have to hold out for a little bit. Utilizing noob tubes to spawn kill the enemies when they start to enter is definitely the best strategy here. In the outside part of things, it gets a little bit stupid crazy at times. So much stuff is going on, enemies are in all directions, and this dude just bobs and weaves like it's a normal day for him. He keeps pushing on and somehow he's still alive and makes it all the way through that section. When he gets to the motorcycle part, a lot of the level is kind of more or less the same as a regular playthrough, though there are some sections where you can cut a few corners and shave off a second or two, and being prepared for some of those turns is definitely an important part of preparing for a run like Black Ops. We see Henry take out the turret by rear-ending the truck, letting him jump on and hijack it quickly, then just spam turrets at the enemies and finish up this level. Going into executive order, it's the level that starts off in the Pentagon. You meet some unimportant historical dude in this level or something, but there's not a lot of time saves here. In the next part where you're by the big rocket ship thing, there's a lot of sneaking and waiting within the vicinity of where you're allowed to go. We actually see Henry run ahead at times and we'll hear Woods say to stay with him, and this can actually cause the level to fail, but as long as you know the bubble of vicinity you have to stay within to move up and get a little bit of that head start, it's actually a pretty good tactic to save a little bit of time. We see Henry wait around for the crew to come up and get those Russian guys out of the way from the front doors, and as soon as Woods says go to enter that building, you can just storm the building and it's this crazy mess. Henry just passes by a bunch of guys and somehow this one guy is prepared, but he just pushes right through him and starts having fun with the crossbow. From there, it's just a mad sprint through the rest of the level and knowing where to go and also just hoping you don't randomly get killed by a frag or something else like that is definitely the main go-to strat that seems to work out most of the time. And then being prepared when it's time to plant the bomb on the wall and also being prepared to pick up the rocket launcher the second it spawns can save a little bit of time as well, taking out that rocket and clearing this level very fast. Going into SOG, this level starts off with a car ride with Woods and Hudson until the air strike comes in. From there, it's just a matter of running through trenches and strafing some more, taking out enemies as quickly as possible. We actually see Henry die once here to what seems like a glitch where the enemy gets stuck in the tank that you crouch under and that enemy, for whatever reason, managed to kill him. However, after getting through the trenches section, we see Henry place a C4 and get to the high ground, taking on incoming foot soldiers with the machine gun. This is really interesting because this section can kind of be an infinite loop, so the faster you can clear this area, the faster you can move along long in the campaign. After this, we see him pick up an M72 law, take out a tank, and clear the section. There's some short dialogue that plays, and you have to finish that before you can progress. While waiting, he picks up a grenade launcher to get ready for the next part, and then pushes down the hill while shooting most of the enemies before making a mad sprint through the burned down forest section, which is where he uses his grenade launcher to take out enemies even faster. Then after waking up from being knocked out, he gets on the turret, pulls out the grenade launcher once again, until you get to the part of the level where you fire guided missiles at the tanks. Repeating this process a few times, he manages to clear this level as well. Jumping to level 6, Defector, you start this level off flying in on a helicopter and then dropping off into a building. So right away, main strategy, run through multiple enemies, use the noob tube where you can, grab a shotgun, and take out as many enemies as you can until you meet up with Reznov. Shortly after that, you make your way out onto the streets and get to the airstrike part. He uses the airstrike on the building to his left while running ahead so we can pick off the enemies as they spawn in and progress even faster. And pushing through the streets, using the airstrike once it is available to take out enemies constantly, it's a good way to save time and maximize your firepower that you have here. Then shortly after the part where you plant the C4, we then see Henry sprint through the smoke to get to the last holdout section of the level, where he then picks up claymores and puts multiple down in multiple different spots where the enemies typically come in, and it helps take them out even quicker. And from there, this section is basically just the same as if you're playing the game normally. So the more quickly you kill all of the enemies in this firefight section, the quicker you can get on the boat and get out of there. After having some nice rooftop tea on the level numbers. It's kind of this mad crazy sprint on some rooftops with some crazy leaps without even thinking or looking twice as to where you're going just because you have to have familiarity with the level before you're going to try to speed run this normally. We see Henry just cruise through a lot of this level. At this specific part with the RPG, he actually jumps on top of a light which gives him slightly more height 
to get the perfect angle to blast the RPG down to some enemies up ahead, clearing them out even faster. And then he keeps running, clearing out even more enemies as he progresses. This is probably one of my favorite parts in the entire speedrun. But for whatever reason, towards the end of the level, when you jump across and catch Clark, when he's telling you the information, because the textures are on such a low setting, no bullet actually goes through the character's head. So he just makes this face and I guess he just dies from a headache or something. No idea what happens. Actually really hilarious and we just wanted to point that out. Jumping onto Project Nova, the main strat here is to run and strafe past as many enemies, which gets really challenging at times. He even dies or almost dies multiple times while pushing through to Steiner just because of the sheer amount of enemies that are coming at the player. We do see Henry make his way to Steiner, though it was a pretty hard fought battle and he still managed to get a decent enough time to obviously claim the world record here. Now, slow walking and some annoying parts do start up once you enter the flashback where the game moves you really slowly until you get into the Nova 6 chamber. You can bunny hop to go a little bit faster, but you can't skip the dialogue. So even if you do get there a little bit earlier, you kind of have to sit there and wait. Once Reznov finishes his PowerPoint presentation or whatever of what happened, he goes out of the chamber and it's back to running through and getting to the end of the level, which actually doesn't take all that much time. Going to Victor Charlie, right away you have to press and hold F to pay respects to the helicopter. There's a lot of running through the jungle with lots of gunfire, and the main strat is to A, try to keep the momentum going, B, try not to die, and C, try not to get too frustrated at the swimming sections, which seem to slow down the pace of the run a little bit. Also, since this is supposed to be one of those super sneaky levels, there are some parts where you have to just wait for woods, which is kind of awkward when you know exactly what you're supposed to do, but you kind of have to wait for the NPCs to catch up. If you need to kill some time, you can knock some bowls off of the table just for fun. During the firefight section, this is kind of a major point where you can save some time in this level, but by sitting in this area where you have a good sight line of all of the enemy spawns, you can actually take them out as soon as they spawn and move this firefight section along as quickly as possible. Then this ending section of the level is of course this indoor close quarters cave section which looks absolutely hilarious on low quality. It looks like there's these shadow creatures but it's a little bit more terrifying than that and it just adds so much more aesthetic to the name Black Ops. Jumping into level 10 on Crash Site, you gotta get to the boat, you gotta take out enemies with a machine gun and rockets while some cool music is playing. It helps knowing what direction the enemies are going to be and where they come from at times. For the most part, this shouldn't be too challenging, though we do see one moment where Henry actually randomly got killed by a glitch that flipped his boat upside down. Rest in peace. But after a long time on the boat, you finally do get to go off and you get to run once again. You get your legs back, so of course you can kinda do your swivel run runs as you would. You get to the part where you go back and enter the crashed airplane early. You have to wait for Woods and Bowman to catch up since they're super slow, which could be a bit of a headache. He then takes out some enemies down below with a grenade launcher, clearing off this section. And jumping into the next level, WMD, there's actually not that many opportunities early on to save some time. Though knowing what you can do here does help speed things along. Enemies come to the windows when you're on the ground and clearing them quickly is the fastest way to move things along. And obviously, marking the enemies fast so the NPCs can move along is also a good strat here. Though later in the level, after repelling, there is some time saves that can be done by skipping down some scares. And when the scary alarm starts to go off, killing the enemies and wiping the area as fast as possible does work a little bit in moving things along. There's one really cool part though that definitely is a bit of a time save, but you can do a glitch outside of the map to get to the railing here and run across, allowing the player to get to the edge quickly and land over on this cliff side once again and then from there you could just jump off the cliff and it skips this little section as it automatically activates the cliff dive sequence and just moves the game along as if it was done the right way. After the section of the level where you kind of get trapped and ambushed, spamming grenades out of the hangar and get some quick spawn kills in seems to be the go-to strategy here and then from there you just need a quick run to the turret to clear off the remaining enemies. Going on to the level payback, there's a quick game of Russian roulette at the beginning but after the fun is over, he speeds past all of the enemies while trying his best not to get blocked by them in the tight underground tunnels. Getting the chopper is fairly easy though, and flying through and taking out the two enemy hinds is fairly straightforward. In the last section of the level, he runs through the forest, runs into a cave, and just takes on Kravchenko, so that was easy. Pushing us on to the end of the campaign, where we are on the level Rebirth, sneaking through Rebirth Island until you get inside the building isn't really something that you can do too much faster, since normally there's a few 
few scripted sequence and enemy encounters that are required. And if you go off the script too much, the game kind of just implodes on itself. So it's best just to try to do the required stuff fast and save time elsewhere. In the underground lab, he just shoots his way through while trying not to get killed by grenades until you get to Steiner as a Mason. Then a flashback happens and you're playing as Hudson, who is also trying to get to that same underground lab. He just uses the machine gun he is on to his advantage and clears the enemies as fast as possible. Once he does get control of his character again, he strafes straight to the section where you take down the helicopters with an RPG. From there onwards, he just pushed through the building, through the underground lab, and eventually gets to the section where you knock out Mason. Meanwhile, while Hudson is monologuing, he goes through the door into a dark corner of the room. You can actually look outside of the map here, and we don't think this actually speeds anything up, but it's kind of cool to look at. Then going into the level Revelations, it's kind of an acid trip, but Henry did keep it interesting by shaking the camera while he moves along as fast as the game lets him. But there's definitely a lot of waiting around that's done in this level. And sure enough, with this fast pace, the run wasn't dead yet, and Redemption was the next level, where we see Henry fly max speed around the boat, just blasting all the targets as fast as possible. It's pretty cool how fast he wrecks everything on the boat. When he gets to the on foot part of the level, there's a lot of enemies that come running in, and he just has to clear every single enemy that pops up as fast as he can. He then pushes to the lower level and flies through that section. He has to be careful not to die because there's so many enemies literally everywhere and he has to tactically take out the enemies where he needs to or else he could potentially die. He uses the AK-74U to clear it out a little bit faster which does help and seems to be somewhat reliable of a weapon here. He moves through more of the level and this is another section in a campaign where level familiarity really comes into play. Knowing how much damage you can take, the risks of moving too quickly to try to shut down the broadcast, and which enemies are maybe the biggest threat are kind of the cohesive triangle of maybe making it through this level at this type of pace. Though nonetheless, he was able to shut down the broadcast, the level starts to explode on itself or something, as do a lot of Call of Duty levels, and sure enough, he's in the swimming section at the end of the level, and we see the swim to the surface, meaning that the campaign was victorious and completed, and somehow Mason doesn't suffer from severe decompression sickness after how quickly he emerges from the water, but that's besides the fact, nonetheless, Henry was able to pull off. An amazing and impressive run in just two hours, 38 minutes, and two seconds, setting the world record time, which is so cool to see how players take a game that is 10 years old or older and continuously find new ways to break the game and maneuver through a game to just create a brand new meta. And we think that's something incredibly impressive. But if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you guys are subscribed here because we plan on uploading more speedrunning content just like this, where we break down how other speedrunners have beaten games in such a short amount of time and other things in the speedrunning realm of gaming. Otherwise, we'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.